Hi, I'm Paul McGuire, and you're watching the Paul McGuire Prophetic Report. I want to talk about a holographic resurrection on today's edition of the report, and I think you'll find this very interesting. You know, men and women everywhere are looking to live forever. Uh, there's a huge hue and cry uh, in the public, especially with the younger generations who are uh, up to speed on things like transhumanism and uh, the singularity and genetic research and anti-aging rights. Uh, they don't want to age like their parents or grandparents. Now, really, who, who could blame them? Nobody wants to age. So in the last 20 years, there has been a revolution of what is called anti-aging research. Nutrition, vitamins, genetic research, DNA, uh, all kinds of things, meditation, exercise. And this has accelerated with the advent of what is called transhumanism, the modern transhumanism movement. And the father of that movement would be a man named Ray Kurzweil, who works for Google. Now, uh, the transhumanism movement is basically saying that through uh, genetic um, alteration, uh, DNA research and experimentation, cloning, uh, nutrition, uh, drugs, meditation, brain waves, um, robotics, computer brain interfaces, and a vast spectrum of cutting edge scientific, biotech, and technological research that we can now reverse the aging process and that eventually Man, men and women will not have to die. They'll be able to be immortal uh, because we will self-evolve, if you will, into higher level beings because of our science and technology. Now, because of movies like uh, Transcendence, starring Johnny Depp and uh, uh, Divergent and Avatar and Prometheus, and, and, and just so many movies that deal with transhumanist themes, genetic themes, uh, with cyborgs and uh, robots, um, the American public is very up to speed about what transhumanism promises and what the future could potentially deliver. Now, these scientists, like Kurzweil, truly believe that in the very near future, men and women will be able to defeat death and they'll be able to live forever. Uh, artificial or technological immortality, if you wish. That's a worthy goal. I mean, who wants to age? There's nothing noble about dying, uh, becoming all wrinkly, having your body fall apart and dying. There's, no, there's nothing noble about that. The Bible calls it a curse. Death is a curse. So on one hand, um, I support the research that they're doing. Uh, I think it's important to understand how science and technology can reverse the aging process and increase the quality of our lives as well as the lifespan. But when we get into the issue of immortality, we need to look at it from a truly scientific uh, standpoint. Science promises uh, that we look at things through empirical evidence and scientific uh, methodologies. So what causes the aging process? What causes men and women to die? Why do we die as human beings? Now, on one level, we can analyze our DNA and our genetics. We can uh, analyze the deterioration of our bodies on a molecular, chemical, neurological level. On one level, we can understand how nutrition and uh, exercise and vitamins and drugs can extend or enhance or, or actually accelerate the death process. So those are, are facets that we should look into. But you see, if we look at death and aging on a deeper level, and this is the crux of the matter, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we either have a holographic resurrection or an actual resurrection. If we have a biblical worldview, and a biblical worldview is a worldview which embraces science and technology and genetics, 
and cutting edge research, but it does so by integrating biblical truths with scientific truths. And that is uh, what I would call true science. But as we probe the Bible at a deeper level, and it must be probed at a deeper level, we read the Bible with brand new, a brand new perspective. And that brand new perspective, which I deal with heavily in my books, like Mass Awakening and A Prophecy of the Future of America and Standing Down Goliath, I deal with all this. And I talk about how the Bible is a book. Let's talk about the Flood of Noah, for example, or the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, According to the biblical account, man was created for paradise, and a, two people, Adam and Eve, were given the DNA of God, which was immortal. And uh, then they activated the law of sin and death by rejecting the word of God. And then when we look at the biblical account of Noah, the biblical account of Noah is not some funky story about some weird guy in a beard building some funky boat with some funky animals in it. The account of Noah is a digital DNA, holographic, genetic account that deals with interspecies breeding, transhumanism, and very high level uh, technology and science. That's what the account of Noah is really all about because Noah is all about genetics, DNA, and reproduction, as I explain in my books. And then as you go into the book of Revelation, or the story of Jesus Christ, which is not a, just a story or a parable, it's not a mythology or a fairy tale, it's a real-life account, you see that Jesus Christ comes to mankind and promises mankind immortality. He promises them that they can live forever and that they will be given brand new, glorified bodies and that they can live forever with their brand new glorified bodies in a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem, in paradise forever and ever. And Christ, as he's preaching his message to the people, and he's proving that he's not just an ordinary man by performing all these supernatural miracles, such as uh, causing the dead to come back to life and uh, healing people that ha are tormented by a crisis, uh, emotional uh, problems, and demon-possessed, and healing people who are blind, and opening deaf ears, and so on and so forth, Jesus Christ is obviously not just an ordinary man. And then when he's crucified on a cross, and then put into a tomb, Jesus Christ literally resurrects from the dead in real space-time history in front of numerous witnesses. So, the very centrality of the message of the resurrection is that Jesus Christ resurrects from the dead. He gets a brand new body, and he ascends into heaven, but he defies death. At one moment, he's dead after being crucified brutally on a cross, and the next moment, he ascends and talks to his disciples, but in a very multi-dimensional manner. He walks through walls. Thomas puts his fingers into the, into the physical body of Jesus Christ. And Jesus' body is not just ordinary, it's supernatural. And then Christ goes into heaven. He resurrects into heaven. And then he promises that anybody who puts their faith in Jesus Christ and becomes a new person in Christ, someone who was born again because they put their faith in Christ, a very scientific thing happens when an individual puts their faith in Jesus Christ and asks for forgiveness of sins and by faith invites Christ into their life and asks Jesus Christ to make them born again. They are born anew from heaven. They are regenerated supernaturally by the life force of the universe, which is the Holy Spirit. They're regenerated in their inner man or woman. They are born again, and at that moment, they become eternal beings that will live forever. And even though their physical body may die and decompose, Christ promises them that at a certain time in history, no matter how 
uh, severely, their body has been degraded, whether it was burnt in a fire or thrown in the ocean and devoured by sharks or whatever, that body will supernaturally recompose into a new glorified body, and that person who has put their faith in Jesus Christ will live forever in heaven in a new supernatural glorified body. And that new supernatural glorified body is at the perfect age, the perfect weight, the perfect height. It's beautiful, and it's a super body. No headaches, no diseases, no aging, etc., etc. So the essence of Christ's message is that he breaks the death force that began in the Garden of Eden. He reverses the curse of death. And he promises immortality and eternal life to anyone who will accept it by faith. Now, science, when it, when it dismisses the biblical account of Jesus Christ, it doesn't uncover the scientific truth and basis for why mankind's bodies uh, degenerate why the aging process occurs, and why ultimately death occurs. You see, because death and the aging process is deeper than just um, scientific DNA. It has to do with a higher level, multi-dimensional scientific law. And we're going to get into that on the Paul McGuire Report in the next edition. You can go to my website to read the article um, the Resurrection, a Holographic Reality, at paulmcguire.us. McGuire is M-C-G-U-I-R-E, paulmcguire.us.